Don't let episode one fool you. Is level villainous? Sorry, villainous level 99 actually worth the watch? Yes, it is. Great anime. Power fantasy. Otome pretty much is an isekai game. Let's start. So I originally tried episode one of level 99 villainess and I just didn't like it. I just Why? I found it boring. Pretty I think I understand why because it's a setup episode because the show starts off by making you think that this is the perspective of Alicia and her adventures and what is the game like light and magic and some shit, right? Right. But then it's like, no, actually baited because even the opening is a bait this is a this is a show about a girl that's reincarnated into the ultimate game and it's a power fantasy like that pretty much it so i didn't really watch more than like five or six minutes and over the weeks after episode one really no one wanted me to talk about episode one no one begged me but episode two onwards i've had a lot of people and i'm yeah. here to say that actually yes is this is a very good show to watch yeah. on a tuesday it's funny it's slightly different it's not going to revolutionize the Otome game genre. If you like more kind of silly direction. To me, Otome games, I've only seen Mob Seca most recently. I've only seen Mob Seca. So like, this is kind of still new to me, I guess. But what I've noticed is that it's super fun. And they have these little cliches. Like there's always the villainous, you know, and there's the engaged fiance prince. But the prince might be cheating on the villainous. And the villainous is actually not that evil. And then there's the actual main character who is not the protagonist of the show. But someone else that's supposed to be a side mob character. Anyway, stuff like that. With a kind of element of seriousness with your Otome game Isekai anime. This one is fun. I kind of put it in a similar category as Bakarina in a way. Way, like in terms don't of that, that type of vibe but for me i don't think the first episode's good in fact after i saw the quality of episode first episode not good i don't even remember what really happened i think we had from the perspective of alicia her getting cucked trying to get to the gate and then like hanging out with the princes honestly yeah that's just kind of made if you really think about it because that's not really the stuff that we're watching the show right now right because like now Yumili is popping off. I think at the end of episode one, there was a little bit of a power fantasy with the rating skill, right? Of like, oh, at level 99, no way. That was the only hype shit. So two, I disliked episode one more. And before people raise their pitchforks, listen, I recommend this show. I just think the show shouldn't be judged based on episode one. Because true, true. Because episode one, even though I kind of see the idea of what they were going for, the execution falls flat on its face. The He's kind of right. If you want to like gather the attention from all these normies and like random new people that don't even know what an ultimate like a genre might be like this to bait them like that in the beginning is like to do for an audience that already watches ultimate. And maybe that is the case, right? But like completely new people, would they understand the tropes that they're trying to do? Would they understand that? Holy shit. This is all just set up. All these princes, they're actually all idiots. Like, would they understand that? The first 10 minutes or so is like the most generic visual novel intro because it's literally the visual novel of this MC going to school, here's her harem routes. And then they either like, okay, yeah. And then here's a real MC, yeah. truck coon isekai her. Now we're gonna start going. But it's episode two onwards where the show finds its groove because Yumelia as a character steals the Pretty much just starts terrorizing everybody. Yumelia just summons a black hole. Yumelia just like embarrasses all the princes and Alicia. She doesn't mean to, but that's where the fun is. The show, because she's in a visual novel and they treat it as such. A majority of who she interacts with feel like generic, stereotypical, cardboard cutout personalities. Yeah. There's three dudes who all want to bang who's supposed to be the MC. MC's super sweet and nice. She's the light magic. She's racist. Accuser. She'll eventually kill the demon lord. And then, oh, what's this? Yumelia's the hidden boss. It's written as a generic visual novel. But there are some characters in the fourth episode, especially Patrick, who potentially is going to be Yumelia's love interest. Yes. Or at least they both kind of have flirtatious energy. Or there's going to be friends. Either way, a very strong character so far. The king and queen might be the best of like the side cast that we've been introduced to. Very odd that the king and the queen are actually normal people. Normal, reasonable, actually nice. The queen was kind of gossiping. The queen was trying to start some drama. But for her own political gains, which is not even that bad, I felt like they were pretty good people. Hell, even the mean girls kind of click club that were... Eleonora. Eleonore. Eleonore. Is that her name? Anyways, she's super nice too, I think. I, I think that everybody... I, I think that... We haven't seen her in like a couple episodes, 
she was a little bit confrontational about like are we like dating the prince or whatnot but it's like no 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 chill 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 we're like all jealous that our girl was trying to steal the king to be like even those characters are interesting but it's funny because i will give this show credit i've yet to see an otome game anime where who's supposed to be like the main characters or like the harem building squad like those three guys and the girl mm -hmm. they are the most weak generic characters in the show and they're being written almost like they're being pushed as the hidden boss because they just don't trust our girl as far as they can throw her and the show has surprisingly impressed me episode five dropped today at least as of the recording of this video here comes a patreon link yo i've been binge watching wait, this one i still have wait. one episode to go and it will be done probably by the time this video is uploaded or shortly after but i want to get my thoughts out here never mind i thought he dropped the patreon like he always does that right here because it's interesting because like i said when the first episode dropped i tried it didn't really feel much no one begged me to watch it episode two comes out people start begging me yeah because i think episode two is the start of the black hole right i mean she fucking summoned the black hole i mean episode two popped off over the weeks i've had more and more people will i keep covering this one on the channel do I mean, it i wouldn't mind to do it, it. Would work on a tuesday but you gotta let me know if the demand's there because i'm not gonna do i ain't gonna lie compared to the viewership let's see this right it's Moon fantasy video versus this what, what what did better let's see this huh 3k 4k uh, it's doing better than seventh time loop villains. Nah, 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 one hundred percent, one hundred percent. No, fuck the angels in my heart too. One hundred percent. Fuck. And no, I, I love Mash. I, I love Mash. Holy shit, Freedom is fucking popping off. But yeah, I think villain is good. Unless there's good. Actually, a demand for it because there's too much damn anime to watch. The one thing I'll give praise for this one, it airs on a Tuesday. I'm literally watching nothing on Tuesdays other than this right now, at least mm -hmm. in terms of new airing shows. I'm obviously playing catch up with things. So if you're like me, you want to fill a spot with something that's good. It kind of went from whatever to junk food to something I'm actually excited to see more of. Give this one a shot. I do think Seventh Time Loop is the best villainess show of the season. Really? No questions asked. Are you guys watching that seventh villain, like a Seventh Time Loop villainess? Well, maybe it's objectively better written. But for entertainment's sake, Villainous Level 99 is probably funner. Is more fun, is what I'm assuming. Because it's completely different. But if you're looking for something a little more, okay, familiar, bit of comedy without being a joke. I mean, the MC for this show, she steals the show. Like, she's just, her voice actor is so good at this kind of dry personality who's actually... The chibi faces combination with their voice acting. And also her voice acting, I think it's, um, I don't know how to say her name. It's like Fairu. I don't know. She's basically like half Egyptian, half Japanese. She's the voice actor for uh, uh, Delta from Eminence and Shadow. Like she's been popping, and Jolene, like right? JoJo. So she's been popping off. She's been getting all these new rules. She pretty charismatic at the end of the day. I see potential with this one. Now I do have full live reactions to these. There's episodes. the Over Patreon the link. Patreon, we will be watching it every single week as it airs. And like I said, if you want to see me cover this one on YouTube going forward, I can. You just gotta let me know. Drop a bunch of those likes. Let me know in the comments. And if y'all know what well to enough, do, y'all y'all know what to do. Go go spam the likes. Give me more farms. Next week as well. Now the biggest star is okay. Amelia. No questions asked. By episodes three and four, the king and the queen and Patrick definitely are characters I'm excited to see more of. And yes. I think as silly as some of the situations are, the general response to Amelia as a character is logical. Like, it can be infuriating because obviously I don't want to see anyone talk most of the time other than her. But when you summon a giant black hole in the sky that almost sucks up the heaven and earth. It's they asked for it. The fucking principal. And Edwin at that time were like, do it. We'll take responsibility. And Yumila had to hold back on top of that understandable too. understandable why maybe the, who's supposed to be the MC in the show, who's now pushed into supporting cast territory, is saying, you look like goddamn Satan to me and you're the demon lord. Makes sense. It really does. You can't say it doesn't. But it's funny because the way the Atome game is supposed to go is that her and the three dudes, they go fight the Demon Lord, defeat the Demon Lord, and then here's the hidden boss, that being Yumelia. Now, Yumelia is pretty much recruited to go defeat the Demon Lord, and honestly, the more we get deeper and deeper into this, the more I have to wonder, are we just gonna, like, corrupt the original party so much that they become the hidden boss? Or hmm, interesting thought. I never really thought of it from that perspective i'm i'm because like there's such weak motherfuckers that we're trying to power level them to like level 60 so they can at least have a chance to like at least like fight the demon lord in like two years right 
or is this pink hair girl like i don't know like i just don't see them committing to the bit that she still becomes the hidden boss with how everything's developing but either way it's not often you can say oh yeah by the end of the second episode she pretty much to prove her magic summons a black hole that almost sucks in the entire kingdom and then oh by the end of episode four she's just gonna mass summon monsters because the way she got the the, the flute spamming is very cute right over here it's very cute she did get her arms cut off while doing this shit it's okay though because she's like built different but yes, I, I think that she was hilarious. The way that she kept spamming. Not once, not twice. I think more than three times she did this and terrorized everybody for the sake of efficient power farming. We use Dark Bind every time to keep them in place so they can farm in Eavesley got to max level that being level 99. She equipped an amulet that yeah. allows her to boost her EXP. But in order to do that, you have to get rid of the amulet of protection or something, right? Something that people in this world would never fucking do. Because that's an insane action. You would never do that. You would never risk your life. That's too dangerous. But she did it as a kid. Doesn't really seem that crazy. But hear me out. Because then she uses at like the age of six. This monster summoning flu. And spawn kills. Just endless grinding yep. to get to max level. The fact that the knight of their world. Who's level 60. Apparently the strongest that they know of up until her was like yeah i would never do that because the amulet i wear stops me from having a death blow i'd be too scared straight up this is not adolf but this is adolfu right this is adolfu one of the strongest knights the strongest knight actually of this kingdom and he's the one that said you're insane for doing that strategy to do that doesn't make him a pussy doesn't make him someone you think oh what what no he's he's logical because this ain't no game this ain't no do-overs who the hell would be dumb enough to, yeah, and like her logic is make sure you go for the things that attack real hard but have no defense because they're not going to attack you anyway, but it'll make it easier so you can grip. And like you want like, what is it? I, I think the other min max was like choose the dungeon with your elemental advantage. It's like, okay. And then by the end of episode four, uh, she just, she forces these students to just endlessly. And it feels dirty because by the time of like the second summoning, she then starts binding them and says, yeah, just, just stab them and you can, it's yeah. like, okay. This doesn't really feel like proper hunt. And they were actually like scared of our dark binding hands. Like the dark magic more than the monsters being trapped in it. Anymore. And the fact that you can't say she didn't learn because this Patrick dude's like, hey, listen, you can't just like summon it. You have to give warning. And the crazy shit is like she does this the next episode, episode five from like yesterday. Remember that shit? She literally gave people an ultimatum. It's the flute or I'm going to injure the students and heal them back up to give them a sense of urgency. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Blows. <laughs> Blows. It's like she's a slave master, man. She's trying to get the <laughs> army up to where they need to be level wise. Jesus. But at the same time, she's a goddamn tyrant. And there's something about the charm. Of well, it's because like she treats this like a game. Because it is a game to her, except now she's living in it, right? And she does love the gaming aspect of it. And I'm sure her like perception of danger has warped because she's had dark magic since such a young age and she's become so strong with it. But still, everybody else, this is like life or death in each moment. Of her as a character. And I think it mainly comes down to her voice actor. Now, here's the thing. I'm okay. sure the source material does a lot of the heavy lifting too because the source material comes out. People like the the story but for me i don't think i would have the same level of enjoyment reading this show and i think it really does come down to mm -hmm. emilia's voice actor because here's the thing this show's production isn't anything really to write home about there <laughs> especially if you've seen the cgi but i'm not watching this for the cgi i'm watching this for the fucking power fantasy and the cute Emilia chibi faces there's some god-awful 3d and yeah. I guarantee you the manga or even light novel covers, whatever it is, have better art half the time than what we see. But her voice actor is so good hmm. that it makes up for any shortcomings that make me say this is a again more hype for this girl right here. What's her name? Uh, anime voice actor Fairu. Fairu? Yeah, this girl. Fairu. I. I don't know how to say this, but she's been like up and coming for a long time. And like she's getting all she was like power from chainsaw man she has a lot of really cool roles right and she's been popping off recently more and more and more as she gets like more like like right, right these two right i think these are the most notable ones chainsaw man you got power you have eminence and shadow delta and jolene from jojo's bizarre adventure and even here we had angie from mob Psycho that we already watched right and now she's doing Emilia. she's gonna have so many different roles too probably in the future weaker medium or something because there's something about a character like this who doesn't really show emotion who doesn't really react all that intensely but there's some these little mannerisms about how she fluctuates her voice 
that at face value, she seems emotionless and lifeless, but she has so much charisma. All I think I know what he's talking about. Yeah, there are some times where it's like, it's like a deadpan voice, but then there'll be like a little bit of like a difference whenever, I don't know, she might like gasp or start blushing or do other shit like that. I kind of think I know what he's thinking about. at the same time. I think this would have been a character that could have easily been miscasted to be either too edgy or too goofy. Like, and she it's does it very just hard perfect. to strike that like straight and narrow persona with a hint of bullshit, but she nails it to a T. And over... Straight, narrow persona with the hint of bullshit is the perfect way to describe Emilia. Yes. Yes. Because she does kind of just act all deadpan and seriously. But then some of the bullshittery that she does and it comes out of nowhere and you're like, what the fuck is going on? That's, that's actually perfect description. For all, there are some good moments of animation. Like a lot of the shadowy magic is really good, like the spikes or the giant black hole. Where the production falls flat on its face, I mean, it right out of the get-go in episode. CGI horses and carts, don't worry about it. Every CG every horse and cart I've seen in Isekai or anime recently is just fucking CGI. Um, they proudly and boldly show 3D horses that have yeah. never looked as bad as that. The dogs that they fight in this bright scene. Here's the thing. I'm not watching this show for the action of farming these dogs, right? Because, like, I don't think anyone gives a fuck about these random dogs. Let's even do a little bit of defense. Like, last episode, the flying fish wasn't CGI. But even then, if it was CGI or not... I wouldn't care. In fact, people were upset. They're like, where is my CGI? Because I would argue that the shitty CGI of fighting the dogs made the scene even more funnier and more bizarre because of the nature of this show. Now, I'm sure when Emilia uses dark magic and does some crazy shit in the power fantasy moments that actually counts, those are where all the budget's gonna go to. Same with the chibi faces. I love the chibi faces, right? But am I watching this show for the fucking animation? Not really. So it doesn't really bother me. Would I want this to be better? Absolutely, sure. Why not? Here's the thing, some people hate it more than I did. Some people say I'm being too negative. It's god awful 3D. It, it is. Like, dog shit. With the level of 3D they were showing, I would have preferred static images with those dogs, but that's just me. General look of the world, the architecture, the building designs, the clothing, the character models. Sprite. I like all that, and the goofy, Vibrant. almost botchy the rock style comedy direction they sometimes pull. There is some good charm there. But overall, it's like, it's an interesting one because there's these elements that, like, I really find interesting. Like, the idea of how the king looks at the dark magic, right? He's like, listen, yeah, maybe because it's so limited over time, opinion got skewed, but it's the same as any of the four elements. The color of her black hair, too, right? They're all racist, man. For light magic. And yes, I understand it's prejudice versus racism. One dude was literally like, hmm. <laughs> like, I made a fucking joke on that Alicia episode where she drew this black face when thinking well, what Eumelia looked like. And she's like, are you the demon lord? And it's like, what is it? Because I have black. And it's like, black. It's like, black what? Right? So it, obviously, it's fucking prejudice. But some person was like, hmm, actually, this is not racism. This is what is called prejudice. I'm like, motherfucker, it's a joke. Seriously, we go from literally the fake-ass Dumbledore trying to expel her to the king and queen pretty much immediately bolstering her up being like she... Talking about that Dumbledore dude who got expelled and the new guy that came in, the new principal, that guy is super sus. He loves too much sugar in his coffee. But besides that, what is he up to? Something about him just, I don't know. I don't get good vibes. It's actually pretty impressive. The fact that when the knight who's trying to determine her level to Adolfo. make sure she's actually telling the truth, she had enough time to think and bow down to dodge rather than reflectively, you know, deflect an attack or something. There's a lot of these elements and these little moments, especially with three and four. But episode two onwards, this show found its groove. And, you know, everyone has different opinions on how long to give a show. For me, if I don't like something, I stop watching it. Luckily, hmm. episode one wasn't infuriating. Episode one was just boring. Like, it's episode mid one just, like, it was more up. of like, can we just speed this along? In a lot of ways for me, I think, had you just took the entrance ceremony and her isekai element and made it an extra long first episode with episode two combined, mm. that would have been more effective than... He's right about that. But I feel like they were going for like a different thematic decision of like kind of baiting us. Because even the opening, they had like two separate openings, right? One opening in the beginning was literally called Light and Magic, whatever the game you know it's called right they're trying to really set up the vibe set up the mood kind of bait the audience into thinking oh here's a perspective of alicia and these people i'm like where the fuck is the black hair girl i saw from the trailer right so it's like a a decision made by their the directing staff maybe that could have backfired i'm not sure it's not too big of a deal for me but if it was just 
like episode one power assessment into episode two stuff for the first episode probably would have been a better hook and to get the attention of everybody for the show than showing you know the generic here's the vision novel this or that the only thing that really benefits seeing the first like 10 minutes or so of episode one is when it comes time for Yumelia to determine hey is this girl also isekai like she seems very skeptical you know like you immediately know that's not the case because we saw it from her point of view at the start of it but even then, like, it's not really something that makes it worthwhile. Some people may say I'm overreacting with how much I disliked episode one. I'm just being honest. I did not enjoy episode one. Just the man's opinions. You don't have to agree with episode them. Episode two onwards sold the deal for me. And I'm actually quite excited to see where they're going to take it from here. Now, of course, those are my feelings. Let me know what you thought of the... Y'all know what to do. Please give Mr. Brandon a like, a sub on his channel if you'd like. I think this show is fantastic. I think that we found a new meta where we're, we're basically just farming so many power fantasies battle fucking high school magic high school isekai i love that shit i love that trope of power fantasy and we found a new genre of ultimate game animes which is pretty much another isekai it is isekai 2.0 bro I'm, I'm straight up it is just another isekai show and i hope they continue to do more like power fantasy you know ultimate game stuff like this i really enjoyed it you guys should check out mob Seca too if you enjoy level 99 villainous